All right, guys, here's our lesson for section 7-3. All right, we're going to do multivariable linear systems. Our previous section, we were talking about x and y axis on a flat piece of paper. All right, we have our x and y coordinates points. What we're going to talk about now are x, y's, and z's. All right, it's kind of hard to draw, but we're talking three dimensions. So we have a piece of paper with our x and y axis on it. Our z axis is going to be a vertical axis that comes off of the paper. When it goes up, that's going to be your positive z. When it goes down, it's your negative z. So we're talking three dimensions here. So we're not talking just on a piece of paper, which is 2D. We're talking three dimensions. So when we solve this, we're going to be looking for an x value, a y value, and a z value. All right. The first couple are going to go pretty easy. And then we're going to start doing what we already know how to do on the other ones. All right, so for this answer, an x, y, and a z. So looking at this, I have x minus 2y plus 3z equals 9, y plus 3z equals 5z equals 2. So that tells me automatically that z is 2. I'm already one-third of the way done. All right, now looking at this, if, since I know what z is, I can plug into z and find out what y is. Oops. So I have y plus 3 times 2 equals 5, y plus 6 equals 5, y equals a negative 1. All right, there's another answer. Now I have my y and my z. I'm more than halfway done. Now I have a y value. I have a z value. I'm going to plug them into that top one and get my x value. x minus 2 times negative 1 plus 3 times 2 equals 9. x equals 2 plus 6, not, not equals x minus 2, or x plus 2 plus 6 equals 9, x plus 8 equals 9, x equals 1. So my answer is 1, negative 2, 2. And I should be able to plug my x, my y, and my z into all of these and get a correct answer, and to these two, get a correct answer, and we know that one's going to be right. So when it's written like this, and not all going to be like this, this is the last thing we're going to do. When we get a more complex one like this, we're going to get one of our answers, and we're going to plug it into a, an equation that looks like this to get our next answer, and plug it in the top to get the last. As we go through this, as I talk, pause it. I'm going to go a lot quicker than I normally do just because it's just me talking instead of me getting questions from you. All right, so pause this at any point you need to. Rewind it, play it again, make sure you get all these notes into your notebook. This is not just for you to sit and watch me go. You should be doing it with me. You should be pausing it, doing the math and playing it, and see if you agree with what I have. All right, so do it now. Pause the video, do number two. I take 3, plug it into z, find y, get negative 3. Now I'm going to take negative 3 and 3, substitute it in, find my x to be 2, and there's my solution. All right, we're going to do this on every problem, but it's not going to be set up like this. This will be the last thing, just once we find our first one, that'll help us find our second one, and finally it'll last us to find our third one or x, y, and or z. Alright, now the fun part. So I get a problem like this. Again, pause this whenever you need to to write down a problem. What we're going to do here is we're going to take two of these at a time. All right. And I'm going to tell you we're going to take, I'm going to look at these two together and do something. And then I'm going to look at these two. It doesn't matter which two you pick to go together. I could have also chose the top one and the bottom one. 
but I just chose the top two and the bottom two. All right, and what we're going to do, how this works, I want to take these two, only these two, x minus 2y plus 3z equals 9, negative x plus 3y equals a negative 4. And what I'm going to do is I need to eliminate one of my variables. Overall, looking at this problem, there's a lot of different numbers, there's big numbers. I'm going to eliminate my x values. I'm going to eliminate the x values of the top two, and then I'm going to do it for the bottom two. So for this top one, it's already set up, cancels out, y plus 3z equals 5. I chose these because these are going to cancel each other out, these top two. Negative 2y plus 3y is y, plus 3z, 9 minus 4 is 5. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing for these bottom two. All right, so I'm going to look at these two. Negative x plus 3y equals a negative 4. 2x minus 5y plus 5z equals 17. Alright, so I want to eliminate my x's again. So to eliminate my x's, this is a 2x, I need this to be a negative 2x. So I'll multiply the top by 2. And I get this. Now I do my elimination. Cancels. Y plus 5z equals 9. So again, going back, I picked the top two. I eliminated the x's and got this. I picked my bottom two. I eliminate my x's and get this. So what I have to work with now is this. I've eliminated the x's. So all I have is their x's and y's. So I have this and this giving me this problem. Now this goes into our homework that we just did. So to have my y's canceled, I'm using elimination again. I'm multiply by a negative one. Y plus three z equals five. Negative y minus five z equals a negative nine. Negative two z equals a negative four. I get z to equal two. So there's one part of my answer. To get my next answer, I'm going to use either this equation or this equation. Because having the z, I can plug it in and find my y. Uh, looking at my numbers, I'm going to use this one right here because it's smaller. y plus 3 times 2 equals 5. y plus 6 equals 5. y equals a negative 1. All right, there's my y value. So now I have, an X, I have a z value. I have a y value, so I'm going to come over here. I have a couple choices. I have a y and a z. I can find x. I have a y and a z. I can find x, but to make my life a little bit easier, I'm going to use this middle one. So I'm making myself a little space down here. I know negative x plus 3 times my y value. Negative 1 equals a negative 4. Negative x minus 3 equals a negative 4. Negative x equals a negative 1. I get my x value to be 1. So really ugly here. Okay, so let me go back. Let me erase some stuff and I'll kind of show you where I'm at. All right, given three variables, what we need to do is we need to pick two at a time. I chose the top two and the bottom two. The top two are right here. So I lined them up and I did elimination because my x is canceled and I ended up with a y plus 3z equals 5. All right, I got rid of x's. Then I chose my bottom two, which is this green. To have my x's eliminate, I multiplied everything on the top by 2, eliminated my x's, and got y plus 5z equals 9. I took these two equations and wrote them here. This is last night's homework. I'm going to eliminate the y's by multiplying by a negative 1, eliminate, and solve for z, and I get z to be 2. 
and then I'm going to take my z to be 2, plug it here or here to find my y value. And then now once I have my y and my z all the way through, I can plug into one of these three to find my x, which is right here. And I got my answer, 1, negative 1, 2. You just have to look at it and decide, like on number 4. Looking at this, all right, I have x plus y plus z equals 6, 2x minus y plus z equals 3, 3x plus y minus z equals 2. All right, so, hmm, do I want to eliminate my x's, my y's, or my z's? All right? And it really doesn't matter. All right, the last one I would do would probably be my x's. That's more work. So I'm just going to pick my z's just because. So I need to pick two at a time and see what happens. All right, so if I have a negative z, I'm going to pick these two. 2x minus y. Oops, oops. Minus y plus z equals 3. 3x plus y minus z equals 2. All right, I chose to cancel my z, so I get a 5x. Oh, wait a minute, this is a little different, this, which is fine. My y's cancel, my z's cancel. I get 5x equal 5, so that helps me a whole bunch. But now I can do a little more math, and I already have one part of my answer. My x is 1. All right, now to get rid of another z, I'm going to take these two, because this is a negative z and a positive z. Back to goofy. All right, so I took the top and the bottom one this time. Oh, and what I needed to happen again, my z's cancel. So now I get 4x plus 2y. equals 8. Right. And I'm good because this is like our first problem. My x is 1. So I'm going to take this 1 and plug it into here. I don't know why it's acting goofy. So I get my y to be 2. Then I need to pick one of these. I have all my x's, I have my y's, I need my z's. So I'm going to take, looking at these three, the top one. 1 plus 2 plus z equals 6. 3 plus z equals 6. z is 3. 1, 2, 3. And we should be able to plug a 1 into all the x's, a 2 into all the y's, a 3 into all the z's, and have all three of those equal each other. That's our end goal. So I chose the bottom two to cancel my z's, and I just happen to get x to be 1. I choose the top and the bottom one to cancel my z's, and I got this statement. So once I got my x to be 1, I plug into here and find my y, and then I use my y and my x and one of these three to find my z. All right, as you're doing this, when you start your homework, when you start your lessons, or you start the homework in class or at home, send me messages. All right, talk to me. Make sure you know what's going on. Send a message on WebAssign, and I'll do my best that I can to answer it as soon as I can to help you out. All right, one more. All right, pause the video and do whatever you think you need to do to solve this. Look at the axis. Can you pick two sets of them? and easily cancel the x's? Or would it be easiest to cancel the y's or easiest to cancel the z's? And pick two at a time. Pick these two and these two or one of these combinations of three, the top and the bottom, the first two, the last two. You need to pick two of the three combinations and get rid of one of the variables. All right, pause it. When you're ready to see some work, unpause it. All right, I'm going to choose the y's because I have y, negative 2, y, and y, so I think I can easily get rid of those. All right, so go ahead and pause it and do what you need to do.
answer to one of these. You do not have to do it the same way I do. There are multiple, multiple ways of doing it. You just got to decide what's best for you. All right, I'm going to cancel the y's. And that's what I did the first time, so I need to do it again. So I'm going to multiply the top by a negative 1. Alright, hopefully. I didn't make a mistake. Let me double check. 4x plus 2y minus 4z equals 14. x minus 2y minus 5z is negative 1. 5x cancels negative 9z, 13. Alright. So I wrote it right. 4x plus y plus z. Alright. Multiply by negative 1. Changes them all. Ooh, there's a mistake. Thank goodness I caught that now. Alright, so that should have been a negative. So I'm making this a negative 8. That's why I will go back and check. Let's just make sure. All right, so I'm both by by negative one. Holy cow, I got a couple mistakes in here. Negative two x minus y plus two z minus seven. All right, that's a little better, hopefully. All right, so now. I'm going to eliminate x's, I'm going to eliminate the z's. So I'm going to multiply this one times 3. 5x minus 9z equals 13. 6x plus 9z equals 18. Let me make sure. Uh, I didn't change this. There we go. Something wasn't going to work out. And when I realized it's not going to work out pretty, I know there's a mistake. Eleven x equals negative eleven. I get x to be negative one. So negative one is my first piece. All right, this easy. I mean, guys, I made how many mistakes? One, two, three mistakes. So go back and do each part. And make sure you look at it. Make sure it's right. All right, so I get x equals negative 1. So I'm going to take that negative 1 and plug it into, let's just do this one. 2 times negative 1 plus 3z equals negative 8. Negative 2 plus 3z equals a negative 8. 3z equals a negative 6. z is a negative 2. All right, so now I have an x and a z. I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to pick this one. 4 times negative 1 plus y plus a negative 2 equals negative 1. Negative 4 plus y minus 2 equals a negative 1. Negative 6 plus y equals a negative 1. y equals 5. So I get negative 1, 5, negative 2. And if you go back and check by plugging those values into each line, and probably even if you don't want to do each one, check the two that you didn't use. And you should be able to get an answer that works. Questions? All right, I can't answer. I don't know. That's just out of habit. If you have questions, send me an email. Send me a message to WebAssign. Do something. Talk to the people around you. There's definitely people I know for a fact will get this. If you're struggling, make a friend. Talk to somebody. All right, last problem. This time, we're going to find the quadra quadratic equation y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, whose graph passes through the points negative 1, 3, 1, 1, and 2, 6. So what we have is a parabola that has these three points on it. And what we want to do is we want to be able to find that parabola. So what we're going to do, we're going to write three equations. The first equation is going to be using the point negative 1, 3. 
The second equation is going to use 0.11, and the third equation is going to use 0.26. These are my x and my y, so I'm going to take this first one. And using this equation, I'm going to go 3 equals an a times a negative 1 squared, ax squared, square my x, plus b times a negative 1, plus c. I'm going to take my next point, 1, 1. y is 1, x is 1, x is 1, and then lastly, y is 6, x is 2, x is 2, plus c. Alright, kind of sets up like we had the last problem, so I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to say 3 equals negative 1 squared, that's going to be a, minus b, plus c. 1 equals a, plus b, plus c. And the last one equals 6 equals 4a, plus 2b, plus c. So let's go to here. I have three x's and y's. I plug the 3 into y, negative 1 to x's, clean it up, and I get this first one. Plug negative 1, 1 into x's and y's, I get the second one. And then 2, 6 gives me the third one. All right, now, we're going to solve it just like we did the previous problems. So looking at this, I'm going to cancel c's. I'm going to use these two together, and I'm going to use these two together. All right, so I'm going to go way up here. 3 equals a minus b plus c. 1 equals a plus b plus c. To solve, let's multiply everything on the bottom by a negative 1. Two. Oh, good stuff. a's cancel. Negative 2 b. c's cancel. So I'm halfway there. My b is negative 1. All right, now I'm going to take these bottom two. I'm going to go 1 equals a plus b plus c. 6 equals 4a plus 2b plus c. Let's multiply the bottom by a negative 1. 1 equals a plus b plus c, negative 6 equals negative 4a, minus 2b, minus c, negative 5 equals a negative 3a, minus b, and my c's cancel. Alright, so I already have my b value to be negative 1, so I can come into here and make this b value negative 1. Let me just go up to the top here, so I have negative 5 equals negative 3a minus a negative 1. Negative 5 equals a negative 3a plus 1. Subtract a 1. Negative 6 equals negative 3a. a is negative 2. I'm getting even better. Now, the last one I have to find is c. So I'm going to go into this one because it's the easiest one. 1 equals my a value plus my b value, plus my c. And I get my c value to be 4. To check these, a, b, and c, plug them in to all of them and make sure they work. Now, for my final answer that I'm going to circle, I want this equation. So I'm going to say y equals my a value, which was what? Where's my negative 2? x squared minus my, or plus my b value minus 1x plus c. So I took these three numbers, substituted them into here, here, and here, and wrote my equation. Negative 2x squared minus x plus 4. Let me clean that up a little bit. So that's how we do it, and we're given three points of a quadratic that we want to find the equation. So we got a lot of stuff going on on these screens.
take your time. When you start getting ugly answers, crazy fractions and stuff like that, go back and figure out where you made a mistake. Most of the stuff is going to work out very cleanly. All right, if you have any questions, again, send me messages. We'll talk about this next class, and we'll do our next lesson on Thursday, Monday, we are going to review. We might even have a quiz on Monday, but we'll talk about that Thursday for our test on Wednesday. All right, so our plan is we have this lesson that we got done today, which is Tuesday. Thursday, we're going to do our next lesson, which is going to be something about partial fractions. Monday, we're going to review. Wednesday, we're going to test. And Thursday, or Friday, we'll probably start the next lesson or figure something out. All right, let me know if you have any questions. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see everybody next class.